afternoon, everyone. It's Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Thirsty Thursday, maybe? <laughs> hey, there you are. So, welcome to Thursday. So, uh, today I'm going to do uh, kind of a 2.0 of Barb's class yesterday, except I'm going to um, make it digital version. So, there. So I've got some things to share with you, some things to show you that will um, inspire, I hope. Some of the, th we're going to talk a little bit about freestanding lace today. Um, this is bracelets and cuffs. So these are all designed in flat strips that with um, a couple split rings and ties on them, you wrap them around and they fit your wrists. Put a couple together or put a long ribbon in the end and you've got a choker. Then we have a whole series of tea light holders. We've talked about them before. Got a nice red and blue one for the United States of America. And I know I have one of you at least watching. And then for those of you who keep thinking I've forsaken Halloween, no, there's tons of fun Halloween. Tons of it. Here's some of the, some other butterflies, freestanding butterflies. That one has a few other designs, flowers and different butterflies. If you're not over summer yet, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, a couple different things like that. This one, it's a little more modern looking, a little more elegant, it's not themey Christmas or whatever. But so this is, these bits will be the candle wrap and this will be the base. And some of them have a, a cloth bottom. You could drop a um, tea light holder in there. fruit tablecloth and napkin holder napkin corners so these embroider out on the corner of a napkin they're quite lovely um this one's also just lace some of it's freestanding and some of it isn't and you can see that notation 30 freestanding lace designs jumbo hoop design and perfect for garment accents uh not all lace is freestanding meaning uh it's Will hold together when it's separate so there's my tiaras and wands another set that was designed um eh, as as chokers and headbands but honest to pete i'm going to use a snowflake today for something it wasn't intended for there's also some freestanding uh birds it's quite lovely Okay, so then back to sort of the elegant um, table coverings, little old world. These replace the fabric corners. Looks like cutwork lace, but of course it's done digitally. There's several different styles in this CD. And then if you want something, uh, this one's leaves. Call it, they call it modern autumn. I guess that would depend what colors you do it with. So there's a few leaves, pumpkin, a little bird, flowers, acorn, that sort of thing. They also did one that they called winter tablecloth and napkin corners. So that looks, these little tabs look like the little lips on a, the little pieces of a pine cone. But I'm going to play with this for a minute. This is my favorite design of all time. <laughs> it's a jigsaw puzzle with no picture. Ah, Kathy, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to take a piece of digitized lace and, and repurpose it, just like uh, Barb took a piece of crocheted lace and repurposed it. So in this CD, there's all these funky little shapes. I'm going to show you what what we do with those first and then I'm going to get into my uh, recycle project. 
So you guys, look at, <laughs> I've got, I'm making these for my living room. And so there's all these funky little shapes. And like I said, it's a, it's essentially a puzzle with no picture. The, the design is entirely up to you. So if you just need a little small piece of lace, we could just stitch one piece out. If you want a longer piece to go in a small skinny area, you can stitch these together like that. And now you have a nice long piece. Um, as well, you can, if you keep going around with the little bits to the middle, you'll end up with a circle. Then this piece here, uh, I started out with two squares in the middle. And of course we could just take those squares and go out and make them uh, a long rectangular doily, right? Or I can add two half circles to the end. It's, it's quite a lovely piece too. And round that off. Uh, the other corner you could, end piece you could make is take three of the pie shapes and make a rounded end. Take you for a little tour. Whichever appeals to you. If you don't like that, how it's joined. Or you can take the squares right out and you can use there we go four of those makes a circle i could take one of these beautiful squares make myself a square pin cushion not unlike barbs but uh, some of us had prolific mothers grandmothers great grandmothers who knit crocheted and did all that fun stuff and some of us didn't so this that was me I have a few things that my mom crocheted, but not a, not great gobs of it. This shape is one I'm completely fascinated by. I'm just gonna lay the way it goes together and the shapes. So to get a bigger one of those, you put four of them together, and you get a much larger diamond. But you can keep you can lay those out and get a really long, nice zigzag piece and um, the important thing about these is um, in the instructions they show you what the contact points are so each side has three contact points and when you push these two pieces together those contact points touch and we just do a quick zigzag or if you're more inclined to do a hand stitch and there again is some of the beautiful variations of layout and then of course whatever you can come up with because it's a puzzle with no picture so there's three half circles with a triangle it makes kind of a club shape it's great it depends on the size of the space that you need to fill I need to fill a pin cushion. So, uh, we're going to talk about lace for a minute. You need a couple of really important things. And there's lots of different instructions out there, and I don't veer from my version. Yeah, I know it works. A lot of instructions will tell you to use two layers of, uh, like a cloth-like stabilizer, the aqua mesh. Uh, this came out first a million years ago and it perforated. People decided it didn't work um, and they were using one, two, three, four layers of it and it's still perforated during stitching and caused an issue. But these two together are like the perfect marriage. And I'll show you that in my hoop. Um, I've got a piece of lace from one of the tea lights. I think it was a it's got hearts in it. I think it was from the Valentine. So the aqua mesh you can see is like a cloth. If any of you remember the old J cloths, that's kind of what this feels like. It's very strong. 
And then this is Badge Master, which is very stable and heavy compared to this. This is soft but strong. And this is firm but perforates like paper when you stitch through it. And so often uh, you would see in a design like this easy tearing around the edge with the heavy, heavy edges they put out on the outside edges of all the lace. It's a bit rough. So this would tear out easy, but the aqua mesh doesn't. So I aqua mesh in my hoop and I lay badge master on top because badge master only comes in one size, 12 inches. So it would, it's hoopable in some scales and not in others. And then uh, just back here behind, I've got a nice big jar of water. And to get this into position, you just drop it in the water to get the pieces out. So we'll let that do its thing. When it's all rinsed out, we'll have all of these beautiful openings. So we'll let that one sit for a minute. Then let's take a jaunt to the sewing machine. So got got my aqua mesh. And then I just drop a piece in the middle of the badge master. I've already loaded a, a design. It's impossible to see. It's white on white. And uh, I was trying to change my screen color there, but it was not cooperating with me. So just gonna let's put it in there. The hardest thing about this lace, I don't have to figure out a pattern or my tension. way it goes and that's the hardest thing we're going to do today I'll let that do and then <laughs> we're going to play magic of television and there's the design that I'm working with today so what I have here I used uh, our die cutter Cut myself a perfect circle. And then I've taken two squares and I'm going to create my own pin cushion. And I folded those in half and then I pinned them together. I'll show you why. It's so much easier turning and you actually don't have to sew the little tiny holes closed if you don't want to so I this is a about a seven by eight inch square pressed in half did two of them and then what uh, we're gonna do for the base and I'm gonna do this the easiest way that I can think of for you and I put the fold to the middle I'm going to take the other fold to the middle and I'm going to overlap them by about a half inch and then I'm just going to put a couple pins in there to hold it so it doesn't move on me. Just a pin out there. Pin out there. So what I've created is the back of the pin cushion. So I have a finished one from earlier. And you can see that overlap there, that half inch overlap. And then you can sew that closed if you want to. But it's so much easier here than trying to do out on a curved edge after you get this full. So, and this one is a pre-made insert, they call it. So that would be this. This one was done in my hoop embroidery machine, just kind of a looks a bit like a pansy. Then um, using the die cutter I got myself a perfect circle and I'm going to use that snowflake on it when I rinse it out but you know 
for the sake of education, I'm going to just show you this, this snowflake here. Just like Barb did yesterday. Good. Stitch it on. Then I would take this, right sides together. Then I'm going to sew a half inch seam allowance on this and then I'm going to trim it down by pinking it. And when I'm done, I'm going to stuff this baby in there. Now, uh, this is a pre-made pin cushion. It's got a lot of weight to it. Also, I, I used one of our um, AccuCut dies to do this because perfect circles are a pain. But I've got a perfect circle and it's much easier to sew a perfect circle if you start with a perfect circle. And it'll make it easier to place my snowflake right in the middle. And it's going to be lovely draped around that. Look how luscious that would be. This one we could attach on top of this after it was made. Probably by hand. Or, ooh, what I would do is the inner circle we could tack it through the middle here, leave these loose, sew it, turn it, and then when we're done, we could tack those if we want them tacked. Really like this snowflake. It's beautiful. It's just a nice big piece of lace, really. There we go. Let's take a look back at our bucket of water here. And everything is dissolving. So now we've got a lovely piece of lace. The holes are starting to appear. And then we'll take that out, lay it dry. To let it dry, pardon me. We'll lay it flat and then we'll let it dry. And there's the there's the bottom ring. And the sludge is, is safe for septic or for um, the drain. When my lace is done and dry I'm gonna sew this together but I like this kind of envelope back and you can sew them closed or not we sewed them closed as samples because it's a little nicer to deal with but it'll finish up just like that and it's hard to believe when you see it this way that that's gonna get shoved in there but once you get it pushed in there that's what gives this the thickness so that you're not pushing your pins through and hitting the table. Because if we pushed them through this, they would hit the table. But when you get this in where it belongs, it kind of grows taller. So that's my uptake on what Barb did yesterday. Hope you don't mind. It was sort of a lather, rinse, repeat, but in a slightly different way. All right, you guys, I am going to sign off. We're going to have Linda Dana look in tomorrow. She's awesome. She's so smart and uh, also a great teacher. So do join us tomorrow, you guys. Uh, as always, be kind, be calm, be safe. Be grateful you get to stay home and isolate. Uh, let's work on a homemade Christmas this year. Uh, share with our friends, family, and loved ones. And uh, see you tomorrow. I don't see you. Linda Dan will love to see you. And uh, maybe our gorgeous Gwen. Yeah. Take care, you guys.